Welcome in everybody. Yeah, I'm lazy. I'm not really lazy as people tell you to be on the channel for 10 plus years. I'm a pretty hard working person, but I don't like to spend a lot of time fiddling around, especially when it comes to baking. When I want something good and delicious, I want to do it fast. So one of my friends came up with a term called hack job cooking and I guess I could apply that to baking too. Hack job means let's get it in, let's get it done, let's get it into the oven, let's get it iced, let's get it into our mouth, let's get going. Today it's going to be all about the uh, coconut cake and I have it looks like a bit of five by eight pan. I don't want to make a big one. Number one, I'm going away in a few days, and I want enough that I can reasonably consume and give to a uh, friend here, too. Uh, so we need that pan. We need the oven set to about 350 to 400 degrees, somewhere in that range. Settle on 375. Miss my Fisher Pay Cal tends to... Uh, uh, he a little bit lower it doesn't have a digital it's uh, by eyeball because it's a restaurant uh, it's a restaurant stove here so very simply a lot of recipes will have you cream butter and sugar and I say just soften your butter first let's just get all of our ingredients into holding the flour for the very last and we'll add the flour to it and check the amount just until we get what looks like a good batter. So let me get my measuring cup here. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw in our, well, let me show you the ingredients we're using first. I have flour here, all purpose flour. I'm softening some cream cheese by leaving it out for later. I have one stick of softened butter here, a little less than a uh, stick three eggs, some baking powder, some milk. I'm going to use a little bit of yogurt to make sure that uh, the cake stays very moist. I'm going to use some sugar too and I have some sweet and flaked coconut here. This looks like about uh, three quarters of a cup and I'm going to use that in the batter here and I'm going to use my whipping attachment here which will get things uh, super fine before we pour it into our cake pan. I really love this kind of baking and cooking just because it flies in the face of conventional uh, wisdom so much. We got the tools, we get the, we got the technology, we can do it up here. So what I'm going to do is add about uh, one cup of sugar into our mixing bowl and to save space you can see I don't have a lot of space here in my kitchen. I'm going to just start going ahead and uh, adding ingredients here. As I grab them, we're going to take the baking powder next. And I'm going to add, let's get our measuring spoons. I don't really measure too often. But baking powder, I think it's important. And this is going to give it lift. I'm going to throw it in there. I know people are like, oh, Rosie sifted in first. Oh, what are you doing? It's crazy. I'm going to take it uh, my butter it's almost a full stick of butter here let's get our knife and we're gonna pop that in right there right. it ain't rocket science guys it's not like we're putting SpaceX successfully into oh well they didn't go up successfully anyway that's right the last time I'm gonna add a little more I'm gonna add one and a half uh, cups of what is this uh, yeah one 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 cup and I think I'm going to add because that that stick was a little short so I want to bring that up okay right there pop that in so that's a bit maybe a stick and uh, two tablespoons on that I'm going to add I'm going to get Stir the yogurt, and I'm going to add a half of a cup of yogurt in here. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to keep that cake 
super moist and it's gonna make it delicious and you're gonna say, wow, Rosie, I really love hack job cooking. It's so much fun. Let's do a couple eggs here. We got one. And if you're not, uh, if you're not good at cracking eggs, okay, then don't do it over the, don't do it over the, um, your mix it, your mixer okay but these are like farm fresh eggs my friends gave me and the shells are very good they're very hard on let me dump this real quick <clears throat> and uh, let's take a second and just wash this out we have to be food safe here isn't it fun like, what are we doing? Hey, we're making a cake. You don't make a cake like that. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, I guess I am. Come on, you're right. <laughs> you got, I'm going to tell Martha Stewart up on Turkey Gobbler Hill or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the name of that place is. Uh, now we're going to put a squirt of coconut extract in there. Okay. And we're going to throw, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put one initial cup of all-purpose baking, uh, all-purpose flour in here and just shake it off. Don't worry about sifting. We're going to give this an initial turn, drop it here. And we're going to combine that. And then we're going to add a second cup of uh, flour in here. And then we're going to add milk as needed to bring it up to a batter form. Okay, this is fun. I decided I'm going to go with a half a cup because I don't have that big of a pan and it's not that deep a baking pan so I'm going to now add the second half a cup and we're going to let that go a little longer. Next I'm going to add half a cup of uh, milk in there and then we're going to let this cream up really well. Okay. This might take about uh, three or four minutes here to get this all consolidated. And then lastly, we'll put our flake coconut in. I'm going to go ahead. I've decided to add one more uh, quarter cup of milk, which will bring it up to three quarters of a cup of milk. One and a half uh, cups of uh, flour, as well as uh, two teaspoons of baking powder and a quarter of a cup of plain yogurt so let's finish off our batter then add our coconut we're also going to make sure at least one time we scrape down the sides and that's going to ensure we get all of that goodness incorporated into the batter now the granulated sugar has to be whipped um, to make sure it's not too grainy so that's why we need a little more time here in the uh, in the whipping stage for the batter okay so let's get back to it and don't be afraid I'm whipping this on very high speed to get all of that sugar broken down so do this for about two minutes and now we're going to dump in, looks like about one cup of the flake coconut. And we're going to whip this in, and in one minute we're going to put this into our baking pan and into the oven. What did this take? Six minutes? It took longer for me to record. <laughs> I'm so lazy, the lazy baker. Pack job baking. Alright, and there we go. So let's go ahead and take this. We're going to lower this. We're going to remove our doodad here. Try to get all that goodness. Try to save that goodness. We're going to take this off and into, into our baking pan she goes so it's gonna rise it might rise really high I don't know 
one thing I do know, it's gonna be delicious. So get all of that goodness into there. We're gonna sort of flatten this out a little bit in here. Just like that. I don't know, I might have to change. That's a lot more than I thought it was gonna be for that. So probably I'm gonna put this into a bigger pan here. So let me see what I have. Much better, I got it 13 by nine. So into the oven she goes. And we're gonna look at that after about a uh, half hour, okay? I got like our hack job bacon so far, isn't it fun? Cream, butter, and sugar. No, not me. <laughs> Clean up time over here. So we're just short of a half hour. And man, when it smells like coconut in the kitchen, you're just about there. I took a, uh, a knife, a very sharp knife. I put it in and I pulled it out and came out clean. Which generally signifies that it is done. We don't want to over bake it because we want it to stay nice and moist. Let's go ahead now and let it cool off. And I'll see you guys in a few hours. And we're gonna ice it up and then we're gonna enjoy our future video, okay? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell for all notifications. Hack job cooking is fun. Lazy baking is fun. 10, almost 10 and a half years here on YouTube. I'd love you to be a part of the next 10. See you in the back here in a few minutes. Well, actually a couple hours. We gotta let that cool down. Never ice a hot cake, okay? Let it cool down to room temperature. Woo! I've decided that I'm gonna do something tricky. I'm gonna turn this into like a Pepperidge Farm cake here by cutting it in half and then uh, putting some icing in between and then icing the uh, whole cake. Kind of clever. So I have my cake stand here. I'm just going to cut it right down the middle here and then put the lower uh, put the lower piece on here and uh, then we'll get to making the icing. I just flipped the uh, cake over and it came out very easily. Now I'm just going to take the knife and cut it in half. I snitched a little bit off of it. <laughs> oh, it's so moist and uh, coconutty. I love it. Okay, continue to let it cool off here. Okay, we're in no kind of rush. We're in a rush to make a quick cake, but we should take our time when it comes time to uh, prepping for icing. It's time to make the icing. I've got one uh, stick of butter here. Uh, yeah, it should be one full stick of butter. And I have one package of cream cheese softened. And I'm going to put that on the mixer and let that... I'm going to add a teaspoon of coconut extract to it and let that whip out real good and then we're going to add our uh, we're going to add some confectioner sugar and a couple teaspoons of milk to bring it up to a nice frosting and then we're going to let it sit for a little while i changed the blade to the icing blade it seems to do a better job of uh, we're not going to whip it to a consistency where it's like a whipped cream so we need to have some thickness to it right Next, I'm going to add like a uh, two teaspoons of milk there and continue the uh, process of starting the icing. Here. I've got my confectioner sugar standing by. So here goes the first cup of confectioner sugar. And we're going to start and just incorporate that first. Now I'm adding my second cup of confectioner sugar. Get all that goodness in there and continue to cream it up. Oh, this is so much fun and that's the way the icing should look. After it's all incorporated, it should definitely have a little bit of a backbone to it, as I like to say. So we're gonna go ahead and drop some Got good spreadability here. 
I'm going to put some on the lower layer between the two of them. Try not to get a lot of crumbs, but we will be putting some um, coconut flake on it, so it's not going to really matter too much. Okay, I suggest having an icing spatula here. It works really well. Everybody, everybody likes a nice thick middle layer of frosting. Get that spread out really evenly over here. Okay, just like so. I think that looks pretty good. One more little bit here. And we're gonna go ahead and take our top layer now and pop that on right there. This is where you see how good your calculations of halfway when you were cutting the cake in half go. So what I like to do first is I like to uh, I like to do the sides and I'll take the frosting and I'll just work it on the sides and then I'll pull my icing spatula in and it does a pretty good job of moving it where it needs to be so that we get a good even application here so I'm gonna do the uh, sides and then I'll see you guys when it's time to do the top got that pretty much set on the side if I'm making sure I have enough for the top and then I can go back and add some to the sides as I see fit but now it's time to drop a nice blob or two on top. Always oh, ice from the center to the perimeter. And you want to minimize your actions because you don't want to start tearing the cake apart, the uh, crumb. You don't want to break through the, uh, the layer that uh, Keeps it, keeps it from being crumbly. All right, so that's a very important, uh, very important thing. I'm going to go ahead and use my spatula here to gather a little more of that. And the icing knife works really, really well for giving you a lot of control. It's looking good, isn't it? And again, I'm minimizing my movements so I don't have a lot of crumbs. Now, this is not as important on this cake because we're going to be laying some coconut into it. But in other cakes, they will suggest you put down what's called a crumb layer, which is a very, very thin layer, and then allow that to dry and then come back and sort of put a second thicker coat on top of it. So I'm really pleased with that. That's pretty, that's pretty, and I think that's pretty uniform. We'll see if we have any more goodness here to scrape out of here. So icing a cake, just like baking. It takes a little bit of experience, but once again, I'm a hack job, I'm a lazy kind of baker. I don't want to take forever. And cream cheese will always give you a pretty no-fail sort of icing. It'll be easy to work. So there it is. The last thing we have to do is get our coconut out and smush it on. Uh, I'm going to spare you the mess of doing that, but <laughs> I'll see you with the finished product. Just doing the final pretty enough, just making sure we have a nice, even dispersion of the coconut. And I will tell you what, I think 
that cake looks fantastic. Let me give you guys a final look. Once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. You can take you can take things and compress and get all that coconut up there if you want, but I think that cake looks magnificent. So I'm excited. Gonna have some tonight. So make sure you join me. I will be live tonight. And uh, giving it a try on the Rosie O'Kelly channel. Once again, please subscribe. Hit the bell for all notifications. Love having you guys here today for some hack job bacon. The laziest baker on YouTube. Thanks, everybody.